The Boston Celtics take game one of the NBA Finals, and I'll be honest, uh, not the return to basketball that I was hoping for. It feels like we have gone, I don't know, a month without NBA basketball, and uh, I was really hoping this was going to be a good game. For the most part, it was not. Uh, Boston was up 29 at one point in the first half. Dallas did cut uh, the lead down a little bit later on, but uh, just just not what I was hoping for. Now, we did learn some things this evening about each team, and I still think it's going to be a good series, but Boston is now just three wins away from a title. You probably noticed, by the way, the setup looks a little bit different. There's a good reason for that. I have another channel. Link is down in the description for you guys to go check out. Start a podcast. There's going to be a longer form version of my game one recap, talking about Lakers stuff as well. A ton of stuff going on in the NBA right now, and that is going to be linked in the description. That will be out tomorrow. It's not going to be out yet because it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I'm trying to get some sleep, which is also why I haven't bothered to fix the mic stand because it's late at night and uh, just didn't feel like messing with it. But that is going to be down in the description if you guys want to check that out. Now, with the self-promotion out of the way, let's talk about game one, Boston, Dallas couple of wild cards I was paying attention to coming into the game. First and foremost was the health of Chris Tapps Porzingis. And not only his health, but how he was going to play when he hasn't played in, in over a month, right? Like it's one thing to be returning from injury. It's another to return from injury and play immediately in game one of the finals. Obviously, he looked fantastic, especially in the first half. He was making everything he looked at. Uh, he looked like the Chris Tapps Porzingis that we had seen all season long for Boston. He was protecting the rim. He was hitting threes and he was a mismatch problem in that first half in a first half that neither Jalen Brown nor Jason Tatum really took a lot of shots. And they really ran a lot of their offense through Porzingis, uh, despite the fact that he didn't start the game. And if he's going to play like that, Boston's going to win the title. And that's something that we've kind of talked about the entire season. If Boston makes threes and Porzingis plays well and is healthy, they're going to win the title. That's something we've talked about this whole time. And, and the wild card for me was whether he was going to be healthy and whether he was going to play well, both of those things, you know, they check those boxes. And then of course, in the first half as well, Boston shot extremely well from three. And one of the reasons is we're going to talk about here in a second, Dallas was able to get back in the game is because Boston started to have some issues from three, but when they're making shots and Porzingis is playing and healthy, they're the best team in the league. Every advanced number that we have has told us that the entire season. There's a reason they only lost 20 games all season long, including the postseason. Boston is very, very good, and they showcase that here in game one. For Dallas, uh, the wild cards I was paying attention to were obviously a lot of guys are playing in their first finals game. You know, Derek Lively is someone that was very good in the conference finals for them. How is he going to look in this series? And Luka looked really good despite not shooting particularly well from an overall percentage standpoint. He missed a ton of threes, but he had his moments in this game. Luka was who you expected him to be. The guy that surprisingly didn't show up was Kyrie Irving. Kyrie just had a, a terrible game. He got off to an okay start, but couldn't hit shots, was missing open threes, turning the ball over, dribbling the ball off of his foot. And if you were going to count on a single player to play really well in this game and you're Dallas, uh, apart from Luka, of course, you were counting on Kyrie and they are just not going to be able to win very many of these games with Kyrie playing the way that he did. Not to mention the fact that their, their role players and really the team as a whole struggle from three-point range. And we know that Boston is going to get up a ton of threes. You know, there's going to be a lot of volume there. And so if Dallas is regularly losing the three-point battle by 15 to 20 points, again, it is going to be difficult for them to win any of these games. It's not to say that the series is over. Far from it. I still think Dallas has a very good chance uh, in this series based uh, largely on the fact that they have the best player in the series, I think, in Luka, despite not a not a perfect Luka game, certainly here in game one, uh, but definitely a concern here for Dallas. Also concerning for them is defensively, they struggled as much in this game as they have in, in arguably any game in the entirety of the postseason. And there's good reason for that. For the most part, with the exception of the Clippers in round one, they played teams that are that are a little bit limited in terms of their perimeter creation. Of course, OKC had SGA, Minnesota had Anthony Edwards, but apart from that, spacing-wise and creator-wise, Dallas was able to kind of pack the paint a little bit, whether it be OKC's issues not having a fifth starter or, of course, uh, Minnesota playing so big and having Gobert out there for so much, uh, so many of the minutes, I should say, in the conference finals. And this definitely was a bit of an adjustment for Dallas in game one. They were struggling to guard in space. They were switching their bigs a lot onto guys like Tatum and Brown, and they each struggled uh, or they each, you know, were able to attack that, create, uh, get a lot of open looks from three. And the other struggle for them was, especially in the first half, they didn't rebound well out of that either. So they tried to play big. They tried to play small. They played a ton of guys in this game just trying to find answers. And I would be concerned if I was a Mavs fan looking at how they played defensively in the first game because 
one of the biggest reasons why they are where they are is because how well they've guarded. And Boston was able to exploit a defense that we thought would be really, really good because of their five out spacing. And again, a, a play style that Dallas has just not been used to playing against over these last handful of series and a play style that matchup wise, they're going to struggle with a little bit because Boston is going to be able to just pick out certain matchups. They went at Luca a ton in this game, something that I think they're going to continue to do either to get him into foul trouble or to, to tire him out. Something that's probably going to count more uh, later on in these games. And so if I'm a Dallas fan, some concerns for me are obviously Kyrie not playing well, not making shots. You expect both of those to turn around, but there's a real possibility that from a personnel standpoint, they just don't have the guys to stay in front of and deal with this five-out offense that Boston has out there, and it's going to be a real issue for them. Having said all that, there was a point in the second half where Dallas got this back within eight, despite not shooting well from three, despite Kyrie not playing well, despite having some issues defensively, and the reason for that is because Boston, as well as they're going to play at times, being up 29 in the first half, everything they do relies on making threes. And when they're not making their threes as they were to begin the second half, they're going to give teams a chance to get back in the game. And essentially, that's what it came down to. When when Boston was making their threes, they were up a ton. When they went through a little bit of a dry spell, Dallas was able to reel some things back in and get it to an eight-point game. And of course, Boston was able to finish them out uh, strong by hitting some, some more shots down the stretch. There. So certainly a lot to learn from game one for each of these teams. And I think that we're still certainly going to see a competitive series. Uh, a lot of the discourse is probably going to be that uh, you know, Boston is just that much better than Dallas and that this is uh, this series is basically over. Uh, I don't think that's the case at all. Dallas did not play anything close to their best game and there are still adjustments that they can make. Uh, we're probably going to see uh, a, a better Derek Lively performance moving forward in the series. He's so important for them. Yes, he's a rookie, but he played so well in the conference finals. I don't know why the finals would be any different for him. He's just going to have to get a little bit more comfortable uh, guarding in space. And Dallas is just going to have to do a better job of creating better offensive opportunities for their role players. It still seemed like they got a lot of good open looks, but not nearly enough assists for Dallas, not nearly enough ball movement for them. And as good as Boston is, I still think Dallas certainly has a chance uh, to win the series. But it, if Boston is going to get this level, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and, and guys are going to guard as well as they have been. Jalen Brown had an awesome defensive game. Derek White guarded well. Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, Chris Stapps, Porzingis. It's the best five-man unit in the entire league all season long for a reason. And that's just going to continue to be an issue uh, for not only Dallas, but every team that Boston plays into the future as long as they have those five guys. For Boston, obviously, not a ton of adjustments need to be made. Continue to be careful about how you're – uh, using Kristaps Porzingis because he's obviously such a huge difference maker for them and he needs to continue to stay healthy. They brought him off the bench in this game. They didn't use him a ton in the second half. They didn't you know, have a ton of usage for him in the second half. I would expect that to continue for them again to just try and even if he plays 20, 25 minutes a game, like that's so incredibly valuable for them. And I think they're being really smart about how they're using them. And then for Dallas, if there are Mavs fans watching this video, here's what I would tell you. There's going to be a game where Boston just doesn't shoot well at all from three. And, and that part of the game is at least close, despite lower volume from Dallas. You got to get that game. At whatever point that game happens, if you're watching it and you're seeing, oh man, Boston doesn't have it from three tonight. That's the game you've got to get. Also, Kyrie's got to play better, maybe put him in a little bit more advantage situations, try and uh, prioritize him a little bit more early on uh, in these games because a lot of the damage he's done so far in the postseason has been in the second half. They're going to need him for the entire game, and I expect him uh, to play much better moving forward in the series. And then as the series progresses, Dallas should just get a better idea of who they want out there. Like I said, they played a ton of different guys. I'd expect them to shorten that rotation a good amount, figure out what their rotation is going to be in the front court between Gafford, Lively, uh, and Maxi Kleber. Uh, we saw some Tim Hardaway. We we saw uh, Jaden Hardy in this game. We saw Josh Green in this game. Uh, P.J. Washington had a decent game. So a ton of guys out there for Dallas kind of solidify that rotation. And again, I wouldn't be surprised to see them come out, play extremely well in game two uh, and potentially win game two, go one, one back to Dallas. I think a lot of the discourse right now is going to be that Boston's just not much better and they probably are significantly better than Dallas, but that doesn't mean Dallas doesn't have a chance in the series because they have the best player in the series still. And we're probably going to have, you know, a big Luka game, a big Kyrie game at some point. And so certainly still some things to look forward to for Dallas. But having said all that, Boston, Three wins away from a title, and they look like they are certainly poised to, to get that next banner they've been looking for for a long time.